Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the probability and statistics. Today we will discuss about 0-1 law, also called as the borel cantilla lemma Myself, Dr. Gar, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. So this uh, borel cantilla law, this is in the part of the probability theory, which is related to the sequences of the events. Or in general, you can say it is the results of the measure theory. Why this lemma came into the picture? This lemma came into the picture due to these two statistics are there. One is the Emily Borel, this is, and second is the Epcot Cantley, which gave this results or lemma in the first decade of the 20th century. Whatever the lemma, we will discuss in detail what is the lemma about that, what is this lemma. Whatever the converse of this lemma is called as the second Borel Cantilla lemma. It is also called as the Borel Cantilla converse lemma. So either you call as the converse lemma or you call as the second Borel Cantilla lemma is there. What is the major features about this Borel Cantilla lemma is it is it states that under some particular conditions, what are those conditions? We will see in the next slide. The probability is either the zero or the one. That's why it is called as the zero one law. So let's see discuss what is the Borel Kent lemma. If you have the sequence of the events on the probability space such that if you consider what is the meaning of that this is nothing but my limit of the supremum of a n so as you see this is the probability it's a sequence of the events so we can define the limit infimum or the supremum so we can define as a limit of the supremum of the events a n as a a and if you find that the sum which is the sum is nothing but my finite you can see it's a less than infinity so it means it's a finite if the sum of these sequences, probability of the sum of the sequences is finite, then the probability will be a zero. That's a very simple proof is very simple. You can see, uh, we can apply from the definition. This is nothing but my limit of the supremum of a n. So by the definition of the limit of the supremum, you can write here. Clearly see that one, once we know that limit of the say x, it is clearly knows that this is a subset of the x are there. So here we can see this is my x and this is my a we can write here as a is the subset of my here now once you know that a is the subset of the b then as per the definition of the probability it can be written like of this all of you know that so we can write this by the exam definition of this it is nothing but my probability and the probability of the union is nothing but my sum of their here so we can write like this so therefore our target is to find of this so what is the probability of the a n you can see the sum of the probability is given to be a finite so what is the meaning of that whenever the sum of the series this is the infinite series and this infinite series is the convergent because the here is given to you it means the limit what is the meaning of the convergent that is whenever you take the limit as n approaches infinity it will go to the zero as n approaches infinity so once you will take the limit as n approaches infinity here this part will goes to the zero and hence this is less than equal to zero also all of us knows that probability can't can't be negative so it always be greater than zero so from here what you conclude that probability of a is my zero that is a required proof of this borel cantina lemma one major thing which is noted in this lemma is there is no condition required for the independence nature of this AIs. So remember that borel cantilla lemma does not require any of the independence nature of that. So once we will apply this on the other hand, what is the converse of this or also called as the second uh, or also called as the second borel cantilla lemma in that if you consider additional conditions that the sum of the, the events are my independent and now in this case you can see the sum of the infinite series of these events is my infinite while in the previous borel cantilla lemma it's a finite then the probability is zero but if it is infinite then the probability is my one okay. again the proof is quite simple again we can start from here it is start from this one now i can write this one as by de morgan's law you can take as a complement we all know that what is the de morgan's law of this if i say here what is that intersection will be converted into union union will convert it into the intersection also we can take the probability on the both side you will see probability of the union all of you know that probability of the union if i say if i write like of this this is my probability of the union and intersection of here 
so by using the additivity property of this is nothing but my less than equal to the probability of their intersection so that is nothing but by here now our target is to reach at the intersection so how you can reach that so we all know that since this is a complement so we can say that a complement over the n to infinity is the subset of the n to m now again we can use this result once probability this is less than of here so we can take this one like of here now our target is to find i can substitute this value here but we can see since this is the probability of the intersection and given that ais are my independent so the complement are also independent so what is the probability of the a intersection b when they are independent so that is probability of a multiply probability of b similarly for the finite it can be written like here can you find the probability of the a complement so this is nothing but my probability of 1 minus probability of a now all of you know that what is the 1 minus x it is always be less than of e raised to power minus x provided x is my greater than equal to 0 since it is a probability so we all know that it's a greater than equal to 0 so i can replace the 1 minus x as e raised to power minus of x now since it is a product of the form so which can be written like of this what is given to you that it's a probability of the events is my infinite it is given to you now we can use of this one it means as n as m approaches infinity it will goes to the infinity so once you will substitute this value here it will be my e raised to power minus infinity what is the e raised to power minus infinity that is my zero so we can substitute this intersection value at here so it means this value is my zero this value is my zero because you can see this probability of this intersection will goes to the zero i can substitute this value as here so what is that this is nothing but my summation of zero so we can see the probability of the intersection is zero why because this probability is a less than zero but we all know that probability is always be greater than equal to zero so what is the implies of that it means it is zero i can substitute this value at here what is the meaning of that it means this is less than equal to zero again what is that this is less than equal to zero but probability can't never be negative so it means the probability of a complement is my zero so once probability of a complement is zero your target is to find the probability of a so what is that this is nothing but my one is the required result of this converse of the Monte Carlo lemma. What is the conclusion of these two lemmas are there? If you have some independent events are there, then you can take an as the infinite number of the events. Then it can be a one or it can be a zero. Once it will be a zero, then the sum of this infinite series should be the finite. And if this sum of the infinite series is my infinite, then that is a divergent series then we can say it's a one since due to this zero and one we will call as the zero one lab we will explain this one example say if we consider the sequences of the random variable as xn such that the probability is here so can you find that what is the meaning of that if n is one then this is my one upon one if x is 2 n is 2 then it is my 2 square and so on so there are infinitely many values of the n corresponding to this once there are infinite many values of the n then which is equivalent to the probability of their intersection of the infinitely many of the xn's are 0 because once you take intersection are there so whatever the xi's are there if x belongs to the xi then it will definitely belong to their intersection what is the intersection of the infinite family is nothing but the set of the outcomes common to all of them so once you will take what is the common of them we can take a as the events of all those outcomes which satisfied this are there then we can check now we can check that what is the probability of the a n we will check whether it's a zero or sorry whether it's a infinity or it's a less than infinity if it is finite then we can say the probability of that event will be my zero otherwise we will call as the probability of that event is one so what you can do is we can simply take the summation on both sides because this is my event and all of you know that what is that this is nothing but my pi square by six we all know that and pi square by six is a finite number so it means it's a convergent so it, if it is a convergent so by using the borel cantilla lemma it means the probability of this infinite many of the events are my 
zero that is my p of a is zero so that's why this is a simple example of the borel cantilever lemma and its significance i hope you can simply understand this borel cantilever lemma in a simple manner if you like and share this video and comments them on this channel dr harikar share this with your friends till then subscribe the channel best of luck students happy learning